Hi guys, I'm Kristen. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my wrap up for the month of June. I know this is coming out a little bit late. So in the month of June, I was participating in the Olympics readathon hosted by the Shell Space Discord. I was on Team Aries and we ended up getting third place, which was really exciting, really great. I honestly had no expectations going into this in terms of winning or anything like that. So I was really excited with what we did. And honestly, I just had such a great time connecting with the people on my team. So I read 11 books during this month and I mostly stuck to my TBR. I think I read everything that I had planned except for one book, which I didn't end up getting from the library. So I'm gonna break up this wrap up into genres and I'm also gonna be reading the first sentence of each book again. So to get things started with the fantasy genre, I read The Counselor by E.J. Beaton. When the Queen Dies at the beginning of the book, it's not a spoiler, it's in the synopsis, and she's the one responsible for choosing the next ruler of their sort of like city-state based empire from the various city rulers. If you really like political books and you really like beautiful, flowery, lyrical writing, this is definitely worth checking out. It is a slower book to start. It is very episodic in quality. It has extremely long chapters. There are only 15 chapters in the whole book. And they're episodic in the sense that I almost think that they would it would work as a TV show. Each chapter has its own little arc, but they're always working towards the overall arc of the story. What was really distinctive here, I think, was the politics as well as the character work. The main character, Lysand, is a scholar and she is extremely intelligent. She's very well read and she is using all of this information and her scholarly mindset to approach the selection of the next uh, ruler. She, the whole thing about the mystery of who killed the queen was, I think, done pretty well. You know who the possible players are from pretty early on, and this does not have an extensive cast of characters. I think it's actually a pretty small list of characters for this book. And as it goes on, you more and more don't want it to be any of them. I, I was back and forth a little bit throughout, but I did guess who it wound up to be. But I think the reveal was still really, really good. And there was a different surprise element or reveal in the book that totally surprised me, totally caught me off guard. The main character is bi and we actually witness her having a relationship with both a female and male character in the book in a current and reminiscing about a past relationship. I did hear quite a few people talk about this in their anticipated releases for the year, but I haven't actually seen that many reviews out. I think it is really, really worth checking out, especially if you like political fantasy. Okay, first sentence for the counselor. The shape of a crown stood out in the emerald wax of the seal, and Lysand glanced at it once before looking away, staring at anything but that envelope. Next up we have Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy. I absolutely loved this book. I was using it for the prompt Poseidon, which was to read a book near or in and around water. In this world there are ships called live ships, and when they have been owned by a one particular family for three generations and each of those three generations have died or like passed away on the ship, the ship actually becomes sentient and has all of the memories and knowledge of those three generations. This book does have a large cast of characters with multiple POVs, some of whom are interconnected and in the same family or in the same place and others are less so connected. Sort of the main driving plot here is that Althea, one of the characters whom we follow, grew up on her family's live ship with her father and she firmly suspects or believes that when her father passes away, he's the third generation, when he passes away that the, she thinks that the ship will be given to her. And because of some uh, sexism and family money problems, she is not given the ship when her father passes away. And that kind of sets off a large series of events. We also follow a pirate. We follow another sailor who was on the ship uh, with Althea. We follow one of her nephews and her mother and her sister and occasionally her niece as well. So it is largely set around this family, um, but there are other characters mixed in as well including two sentient ships and some sea serpents, which is a whole other thing. I am really excited to see where this series is going. If you haven't read any Robin Hobb or the Live Ship Trader series, I definitely recommend checking out one book in. I know I'm going to be heartbroken at some point in this series, but I do think it's pretty amazing. And if you like character work, you have to read Robin Hobb at some point. 
first sentence in this book does have to do with those sea serpents. So Malkin abruptly heaved himself out of his wallow with a wild thrash that left the atmosphere hanging thick with particles. Then I read Tower Lord, which is the second book in the Raven Shadow series by Anthony Ryan, and I read this for the Aries prompt because it is a military-based book. I read the first book in this series, Bloodsong, earlier this year. I really liked it. Valen is our main character, and he is sort of that perfect, morally upright, good, just wants to do right sort of a character. He's also really good at things, but he's in a situation and a world which always, which sometimes forces him to do things that he doesn't want to and doesn't believe in. The first book was very much so found family vibes, whereas this book had a really different, interesting shift. A lot of reviews talk about how the book really, and how the series changed a lot from the first book to the second book. So what happens is that we still have Valen as a character, but the author also introduced three new characters from which we have a point of view, uh, two of whom are characters that existed in the first book, so we know them. I actually was okay with this. I obviously really love Valen, and I wish that we had more time with him, but there wasn't a lot going on in his plot line. And so even though I always want to take B with Valen, there was other stuff going on and I was okay with seeing it. Something that I thought was really, really special about this book was that you could really, really see all of the ways in which Valen has changed the world or changed people within this world. It was almost like everything that Valen did in the first book, whether it was a huge plot event or a very small meeting with one person, has had significant impacts on what we see going on in the second book. Whether he has changed someone's life for the better or the worse, or the political setting of what's going on, Valen significantly has impacted where the world is at. Uh, and it was really, really interesting to see that not only from his perspective in the book, but actually more so from these other three characters seeing or running into people who knew Valen or who know Va Valen. So there were some things that I missed, uh, some references or people, I don't remember the specific things that happened, but the way that it was written kind of jogged my memory enough so that I was able to get the significance of what was happening. If you read the first book, you know that the story is almost being told to this chronicler or historian called Vernier by Valen in the first book, and so Vernier is actually around in the second book as well. So it does take place about five years after the end of the first book, but really it takes place like immediately after when Valen is uh, telling his story to Vernier in the first book. The setting that we step into with Vernier at the beginning of the book is that there is a invading army that has been attacking, I forget what it's called, but Valen's country, I think the United Realm or something like that. First sentence in this book is from Vernier. I was raised in luxury. Then I read The Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst. I used this for the Hades prompt. Ultimately, I found this book a little bit disappointing. I did do a full review, so you can check that out. Uh, I go into details of things that I liked and didn't like and, and why I wasn't in love with this book. I don't think necessarily that it's a bad book. It just wasn't for me. I actually think this would make a really good intro to fantasy book. The concept for this book is really cool and it is essentially that you have that group of heroes who save the world except where we're not seeing them save the world we're just catching up with them 25 years after like the big event has happened and where they're all at one of them died one of them is a hermit one of them is really famous and successful another one went the quiet family life path and the final one is not doing so well and this has sort of the getting the gang back together vibe and a big thematic point of this book was reflecting back on the choices that you've made in your past and seeing the impact, seeing the fallout on their lives and the lives of their friends in this current time period. I think that this book was pretty, had pretty awkward pacing that had to do with the stakes being there and not being there on and off all throughout the book. I also thought the world building was very, very minimal. I know that they were in a mountain based world, but I don't really feel like I got any sense of impression about like what that looked like or what that was like. And we maybe didn't go as in depth into the thoughts and feelings of the characters involved as I would have liked, I think. But it is a standalone adult fantasy, so it's not a huge commitment if you're interested in checking it out. If you do like other books by Sarah Beth Durst, I think that you'll probably like this one as well. First sentence in this book, Kriya always wore her coat with many pockets when she went out to steal bones. 
And then last adult fantasy book that I read was The Memory of Souls by Jen Leons. This is the third book in the A Chorus of Dragons series. I always am at a loss on how to describe this series. It is a prophecy-based series, and it is one in which it's sort of like the main character is prophesied to not only save but also destroy the world, one of those things. But really, the idea of good guy and bad guy is getting really, really complicated in this series. In the second book, we got a new perspective that showed us some of the background behind what this other guy, bad guy, was thinking, some of the things that are driving him that made us start to really question what everyone is working towards or questioning the motives behind what people are doing and that expanded even more in this book. While the first couple books played a little bit around with timeline and the idea of the story being narrated to someone and like compiled and presented to someone as evidence, in this third book it went even more into that. It had some very very breaking the fourth wall meta moments. Uh, so like they're starting to refer to the first books as books. Two of the characters are sitting in sort of the current time talking about what happened and they both know like the one was the one who compiled the first book of evidence so they're sitting in this moment and then they're reflecting back on the events of this current book in this one they are not only sharing their perspectives from what has happened but also the one guy has again compiled notes from other people so we do get a few, a few different perspectives throughout the book as are needed for the plot don't worry he's compiled the necessary perspectives for us and and they're assembling sort of this current book that you are in the act of reading so it's kind of trippy if you like weird stuff like that definitely check out this series it does some really interesting things with timelines and narration there are footnotes I don't know what to say about this series outside of that it's bananas because it is bananas. The interactions or relationships between people is extremely complicated, pretty incestuous, not in actual fact. They have some ways in which they're trying to be like, don't, don't worry, this is an incest. Yes and no. <laughs> Basically in this world there is a gemstone that was introduced in the first book that allows for soul switching. So some of the characters have been soul switched, like their soul was originally this one guy, but he's now in a new body. And there's also certain beings here who are extremely long living or immortal. And there are some characters who have been reincarnated. So we've got soul switching, super long lives, and reincarnated souls. And that little combo makes it so that there's actually, even though we have like a really long extended history of information that's super relevant to what's happening right now, it's all the same people. It's all the same people and they have either been related, married, or in a relationship, or slept with each other at, at any given time. I enjoy the ride. I will say that about this series. I have no idea where it's going. It's super complicated. It's so confusing but it's kind of like being on a fun roller coaster. I don't know if I'm in love with it, but I am enjoying the ride. That is how I feel about this series. I'll read the first sentence. Kieran found Servishar in the library, or rather the 3000 years of accumulated detritus that had passed for a library to a bachelor who had never once considered that another person might need to look through all his centuries of research. Hi guys, Editing Kristen here. So I am really trying to keep my videos shorter, even though in the moment when I'm filming, I just keep talking. So on that note, I'm gonna split up this wrap up into two parts. So this is the end of the first part. And if you'd like to hear my thoughts on the young adult and romance books that I read this month, you can check out my June wrap up part two. Let me know down below what your favorite book for the month of June was, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day guys, bye.